Hi everyone and welcome to a series of videos for people interested in getting hands-on with Data Cloud. My name's Dave Norris and in this video we'll be looking at how we can dynamically change the contents of a website based on some configurable rules. To do that we're using a fictitious hotel chain called Coral Cloud Resorts and if you're interested in any of the configuration we've done today then check out the link in the description below. Specifically in this video, we'll be using the Interactions SDK and Salesforce Personalization to dynamically change the homepage image and related text on the website. So let's recap on the systems landscape from a previous video before we get started. At Coral Cloud Resorts, we were tasked with serving dynamic content on the website based on engagement, which is really what the users are interacting with. And we've already set up Data Cloud to bring in the website data and have created a data graph to help surface key insights as data changes in near real time. We're going to focus on Salesforce personalization to see how we can set up configurable rules using the data graph we now have available. So Salesforce personalization has a lot to offer in terms of creating content to tailor user experiences and we can't cover the breadth in this video. We're just focused on two key features namely personalization points and decisions. Now personalization points, as the name suggests, are really just points in time where personalization can occur. So adding a product to a shopping cart might be an example of a personalization point. And the decisions, well, that's the business logic you can create to dynamically determine which personalized content to display at that particular point in time. So for Coral Cloud Resorts, they wanted to dynamically change the image and text on their homepage based on the featured experiences people are clicking on. So our personalization point is simply going to be viewing the homepage. And the decisions we create are going to dynamically determine which image and text we display to a user based on what they're engaging with. The best way for me to show you this is just get hands on in the tooling and create the personalization point and associated decisions. In Salesforce personalization, under personalization points, we'll create a new record. We'll select where our data is coming from. Well, we've created a data graph in a previous video that gives us access to the web engagement data in near real time. We'll specify a personalization point name. Let's call it homepage image. And then we want to send back some manual content using a template. We'll use static banner here, but you can create your own if you need to. And then we'll add some personalization decisions. So let's appeal to adventure seekers. Let's create one called show adventure image. And the template gives us the ability to send back an image, some header text, and some subheader text. We're not using call to action here. We'll move on to creating the targeting rules. Here I can use data in the data graph to add a condition. So I can use the guest profile data graph, and I can either use direct attributes or any related attributes, any related data model objects. So we'll drill down here to try and find the web engagement data. So we'll go via the unified individual to product browse engagement. And then I'll select the product attribute. And here I want to say, I want to trigger this when someone's got at least three records. So I'll say is greater than two. Uh, and that's because I've been interacting with the website. Uh, a few times historically. So make sure you change that value. And then I only want to trigger it when it's an adventure style experience. So under resource, when it's product, I'm going to say contains and then a value. So we've got a teens wilderness camp. So I'll specify the value wilderness. So that's as easy as it is. We can move on to configuring another decision. So we'll click save and new. And now instead of adventure seekers, maybe we'll want to do a show yoga image decision. And again, it's going to specify the same attributes, different image this time, different header text, different subheader text. And how do we target this rule? It's going to be very similar to the condition we applied before. We'll drill down on our data graph to find the web engagement product. Again, we'll say we need to hit the experience more than a certain number of times and we want to look for a specific product. So we'll say contains, and this time it's not wilderness, it's yoga. And that's personalization points and decisions in a nutshell. 
We now have variants that we're going to use in our website to be able to change the image based on the experiences people are clicking on. So let's move into the code to see how we use this personalization point. In the code base, we're using the Interactions SDK we previously set up, and we're making a call to the Personalization API to retrieve the response for the name Homepage Image. That's the API name we used when we created the personalization point. And this is going to respond with a payload that contains attributes for image and headlines, the header and the subheader, that we extract, and then we'll use them to dynamically change the image and text shown. So let's move to the website and see what impact this has to the experience. So welcome back to Coral Cloud's website. This is the boring default image that's always been shown to every single guest up until now. And what we should see is that this content changes dynamically based on the number of times we click on these featured experiences below. So if we've set up the rules correctly, one more click on Beach Yoga Retreat should give us a more grounded feeling when we navigate to the website in terms of the image and text shown. And if we click on the Teens Wilderness Experience, we should get a more adventure seekers look and feel. So first I'm going to click on Beach Yoga, have a look at the Beach Yoga Experience. Let's navigate back to the home page and see what it's done. So we're displaying a default image, but after a period of time, it's now asking me to find inner peace. Let's do the same, but this time we'll scroll down and we'll click on the Teens Wilderness Camp. This is mimicking our Adventure Seeker experience at Coral Cloud Resorts. Navigate back, and again, the default image shows, and then after a period of time, we now get an experience that will appeal to Adventure Seekers. And again, the image and the text shown has all come from Salesforce personalization. By making a few simple changes to the website, we've really elevated the experience. We're now listening for which assets are being clicked on, and then we can dynamically change the image and text accordingly, and the website feels a lot more personal. Now the rules we've configured here are pretty basic in nature, and you probably wouldn't want your website changing as dynamically as we've configured it, but the good news is you now have access to all the data you need to change those rules dynamically. And it's not just changing homepage images, it's about making personalized offers or perhaps recommending products, and we've built a really good foundation to be able to do that. Now we did add some console log statements into the code, so why don't we open up developer tooling and then have a look what's actually being sent via the Interactions SDK. So back in the website, if we open up the console to see the log statements we're outputting, we can see that we're sending web engagement events. This is what we set up in a previous video, the last featured experience we clicked on was the Teens Wilderness Camp. So we can see that being sent to Data Cloud. And then we're asking for the personalization associated with the homepage image. This is the personalization point we set up. And Salesforce personalization replies with an object. And if we expand this, we can see that the object has attributes, the background image URL, the header, and the subheader. And these are the attributes we set in those configurable rules. And that brings an end to a series of videos specifically looking at how you can use Data Cloud and the Interactions SDK to start capturing website engagement and then making informed decisions to personalize the content shown to your end users. Over the last few videos, we set up the website connector. We then ingested some key data sources and mapped that to the customer 360 data model. We then set up a data graph and the output of the data graph we fed into Salesforce personalization where we could set up dynamic rules to change the content shown on our website. If you like content like this, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the Salesforce Developer YouTube channel for more content like this.